Hey there, Red Specs Gaming here, and welcome back to the Create series that we're going to be doing, working on how you use Create and what the mechanics are for Create. Um, today we're going to cover some basic machinery, the, the starting machines, and how you put those to use, and how different services, work services that you use for them affect them, and uh, we'll go from there. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the very first machine that you're going to want to create, in fact, the very first machine that you will need to create once you've got a power source, that is, is the mechanical press. And the mechanical press is made with a block of iron, an andesite casing, and a shaft. And what this is going to do is this is going to give you the ability to do all kinds of stuff, really. Um, but most importantly, the first thing we're looking for are making sheets, because you're going to use sheets of metal for various things. So we're going to bring our mechanical press over here and here at the end of the line I am going to take a chain drive and hook it up like that and that'll bring our power up and over and then we can take our mechanical press and we can put our mechanical press I'm actually going to take this up one more we can put our mechanical press right up against there and when you're hooking machines up in create you want to make sure that obviously the uh, the internal shafts line up with each other and that's how you know you have connection and then here is your mechanical press I'm gonna fill this back in with grass and what a mechanical press does is when you put things underneath it it will smush them so if we wanted to get these sheets here which we would need you would start with some iron ingots for example let's say we wanted to do three iron ingot she or three iron sheets and three golden sheets well then you could take these and you could just toss them down underneath that but wait why isn't it doing it well that's because this is not close enough to that so let's say we take that and you want to basically place the item that you want to be uh, processed directly below the drive here so if we now put this up there you see it starts coming down and it's slow and that's because the RPMs that this guy creates are not great. This has a lot of stress. It creates a lot of stress, but its RPMs are slow. But you can see now that we got us an iron sheet. And you can do the same thing with gold. You can actually do the same thing with most metals, as it will press them. And bam. And so there you go. That's how you will get sheets. And you can do stacks at a time if you want. But what will happen is, oop, I missed it. If you do stacks at a time, what will happen is it's only going to press them one at a time. So he'll come down, he'll press one of them, and then he'll go back up, and then he'll come back and press the next one. So you can see now that there's both ingots and that there's both uh, a plate there as well. And so he's going to go through that stack slowly over time and do that. But here's the problem. This exists in the real world right now, right? And items in the real world tend to despawn. So we don't really want to use just a flat surface like that. Okay, so in order to keep items from despawning while they're being processed, uh, the three starting work surfaces that we're going to talk about are belts, which as we saw last time are made with dry kelp, depots, which are made with an andesite casing and an andesite alloy, and basins, which are made with andesite alloy in a boat shape. And these three have different properties and they do different things, uh, depending on how you're using them. So let's come over and we will start, we'll start with a depot. And the depot is basically a, a, a work surface, just a basic work surface that you can put things onto. So like, let's say we wanted to put these plates on there or these ingots to be pressed into plates you throw that on there what will happen because we put a stack on there is he's going to go up and down and he's going to process each one one at a time and now I know this seems very slow but we can actually speed this up a lot uh, before too long here but we'll get there um, and so you can see he's slowly pressing those into plates and he'll do that until they're completed and they'll, the plates will build up around the edge here. But all of those are attached to the depot and so they'll stay there forever. They won't despawn like if they were just sitting out in the real world. 
Um, the other thing to know is you can feed into this with hoppers and there's other things in create, which are actually better than hoppers for putting into and out of, but we're not quite there yet. So that's the depot. And then you have the basin and then the basin, um, is, you know, it's actually for compacting things mostly. So let's say we put that one, that one ingot in there. Let's just toss that in there. You see nothing's happening. He's not going to press that into. Um, he's not going to press that into a a a, uh, a plate because that's not what the basin is for. Like I said, the basin is more for compacting. So, for example, let's take nine of these instead, and then this is not going to work the way you think it is. But let's go ahead and throw those all in there real quick, all nine of them, and you'll see as he goes through. You think, okay, he's going to make a block, right? But no, that's not what's going to happen. Because he's going to actually take the first four of those and he's going to make an iron trap door instead. So if you want it to make a block, what you have to do is you have to set the, um, the filter on the front. you got to be specific about this. So you can take an item and you can click it in here on one of these faces and you can tell this basin, this is what we're making in this basin. So right now this basin knows, hey, I need to make... I need to make uh, blocks. So then when nine ingots get in there this time, so we'll do the first four. And you can see nothing's happening because he knows he's making blocks. And now that there's nine in there, now he'll go down and he'll press that into blocks. And so think of it that way. This is for like compacting things, whereas the basin would be more like for flattening things. And then that's basically your basin and then this can also have a heat source underneath it for cooking things uh, which we'll get there in the series eventually but for now just know that's the basics of the basin and then finally the belt and the belt is the belt is your friend the belt you're going to have lots of belts because you're going to use belts to move items from one place to another and the way the belt works is i've already said i've got some chain drive coming off the back of this chain drive and that's so i can do this thing and we're going to put a shaft coming out this way and then we're going to put some shaft out here and then the way a belt works is a belt has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19, right? A belt, a single belt can go 19 on a single belt so just keep that in mind but a belt works b between two shafts so if we go here instead with it now it hooks it up and because this is driving the rotation that belt is turning in that direction and the way a belt will work now is let's say you take your your ingots and let's throw them on there and you see how they attach it's the same thing with the depot and the and the basin if you throw it in there it attaches to the to the work surface and it's no longer in the world and the way a belt works is everything's going to move in this direction and then he will process them. You see how that paused? He'll process them into plates one at a time and then it'll keep moving in that direction. And then you can either have hoppers or other ways of catching these because that should spit off the end there. At this point, now it's back in the world and that will despawn before too long. So if you're using belts, you got to make sure that you have um, containers, hoppers, things that can catch them coming off the end of the belt. Um, and then in this case, if we threw the whole stack here, let's do all 16 of these. So there's a stack of them now. And we'll catch these as they come off. I'll take that. What's going to happen is when the stack gets down to the end, it's the stack will pause there underneath him. And then just like with the basin or with the depot, he will normally actually, uh, did I mess that up? Hang on. I wonder if we got confused because I had that in there. If we take the whole stack and toss it on there. Yeah, what happens here is he's going to come down and he's going to get one of them. Right? And then one of them will move forward coming out of here. And then it'll come down and it'll get the next one. So just like with the depot. This guy is just going to sit there and he's going to do this stack one at a time at a time and then spit out the, the finished product at the end here. So you can do whole stacks at a time as well. Okay, and then to prove 
that you can hook a hopper up to this. We could take a hopper and we could put it here, or you could do it above, either way. And then in this hopper, we could throw some, let's say, some gold ingots. And you can see the hopper will feed the ingots into the belt itself one at a time. And then that can then come through and it can press those into plates as well, just like before. And then you could have another hopper down here that caught them as they come out. And let's say you had a barrel here or here and it was catching them as they came through. When it gets to the end, it'll go into that hopper. There you go. Okay, so once you have plates sorted out, before we go on to any other machinery, uh, you need to take a beat and make these two items. The first is the goggles, the engineer goggles. That uses a golden sheet. I keep saying plates, but they're sheets. Uh, some glass and some string, and so that would be your engineer goggles. And then the second item you want to make are some golden sheets, a cogwheel, and a stick, and that'll give you your engineer's wrench. Um, the goggles are wonderful for this pack. You put those on, and you can get a lot more, lot more information. So let's say, for example, Let's look at this guy here, and you can see the pop-up that you get now that you have the goggles. You can see that, hey, this machine, this mechanical press, costs us 32 stress units at the current speed that it's set at. Okay, so now we can start to see how things work. Plus, if we come over here to these, to these guys now, if we look, oh, hey, look, I can see what the stress is in my whole system right now. Right now we are producing 2048 stress units and we have 2016 left over. We are 1% stress, super low. And we can look at our speedometer. Oh, well that's okay. The whole system is only running at 4 RPM though. And so that gives you an idea of like how everything works. Oh, hey look, this guy is the one producing our 2048. This is where it's coming from. And so these are, when you're working in Create, you need these goggles. Just no no question you need the goggles now the wrench the wrench is great because it allows you to do different things like rotate blocks and if you shift right click you can pick them up you don't have to worry about things falling into the world and getting lost like especially if you're like building over lava or something you can just and that picks them right up into your inventory so engineer wrench has many uses and you will definitely want to have it so make sure you have it you see even that now that we're wearing our engineers goggles when we put these in, you can see which way it's rotating, right? So it's rotating in that direction, and you can see that as you put that in. So these are two items you definitely want to have. Okay, so the rest of the machines we're going to cover in this video don't have to be done in any certain order. It really depends on what your uses and what your needs are. But we're going to start here with the mechanical drill. And the mechanical drill is made with an iron ingot, some andesite alloy, and casing. And like it, sounds the mechanical drills function is to drill things so let's take some more chain drive here we'll bring this over and then i'm just going to hook this drill up just like that okay and so you see it's 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 drill is out forward something to be aware of this will let me uh go into survival here real quick so i can prove this this will hurt if you walk on it so be careful and especially if it's at a higher rpm it'll hurt even more so just be careful of that um and what you're doing with this is later on we're going to get into mobile machines you can build an actual drilling machine with this um you can build a, a drilling arm you can do all kinds of stuff um but one of the big things that you're going to want to do with a uh, with this is you can actually build yourself a cobblestone farm because um, you can start farming materials using the create, do everything from scratch, starting with just the drill. And so, just to show you this real quick, if we take some stone, and let's say I put a piece of stone right there, you can see that the drill is breaking it. Now, obviously, if we speed this up, it's going to be a lot faster, which we'll get to, uh, just not this, this episode. But see, that now will break that, and it should come up as cobblestone. There you go. We have cobblestone. So one of the best uses of the drill is a cobblestone generator, which is going to be the kind of the start of your your entire um, factory, because you can use this 
to feed everything. So you're going to start with a setup like this, which is kind of a shelf that is back one away from the center. We'll consider this the center, but this needs to be back one. And then this one's okay. And you can put water in these spots here. And the reason you're going back one is you don't want it flowing into this side. And so with this setup like this, what happens is that water goes down and falls and stays like a curtain here and only touches the blocks in this area and doesn't touch these blocks. Because what you're going to do is you're going to put lava on these blocks. And what will happen is as the lava flows forward and fills this block, that block touches the water, turns into cobblestone. And then if we were to break this, it would flow again. You'd get more cobblestone. See? And this way the water doesn't go forward and touch your lava. Because if the water goes forward and touches your lava, you get obsidian, of course. So with this setup the way it is, what you can do then is you can come in and you can take your mechanical drills and you can put your mechanical drills above this and don't worry about them being rotated wrong because we have a wrench now and we can rotate the drills down right something to be aware of the side that you that you click on your drill that's the side that will rotate so we're clicking on this side to rotate it this way if you were to click it up here it would rotate the other way if it rotated that way these don't rotate that way but just keep that in mind and then with your drills on here, now you could come in with some more chain drive. We could probably hook this up to these. Let's actually do it this way. Um, and then we can come over. Sorry, we could come this way. Let's rotate this in. So there's the chain coming in. Let's rotate this one up. Oop, I did not mean to break that one. Let's uh, bring him straight up here, this guy. So he's coming up and over now. And we'll bring him in here. That's what we'll do. So now he's hooked in chain drive that way. And you can see that now these guys are spinning. And if we had hoppers down here at the bottom then what would happen is when these break, it'll catch the cobble that's being made. And so this is going to be generating cobblestone for you and constantly breaking it. And then the hoppers would pick it up there and then the next piece would come. And obviously as we speed up the RPMs on this, this is going to go a lot faster basically. So this will go a whole lot faster. And I can prove that by uh, hooking this up to temporarily to a uh, creative motor. You have uh, motors for creative work. And let's say we hook this creative motor here. And right now that's 16 RPM. And you can see that's already sped up a lot at 16 RPM. See? And let's say we increase that. Let's just scroll this up here. Let's move this up to really fast RPM and you can see it breaks it almost quicker than it can create the cobble and you can see how that would quickly lead to a lot of cobblestone okay so next up we'll talk about the mechanical saw and the mechanical saw is to wood what the mechanical drill is to stone this is andesite some iron and some iron sheets and that gives you an a mechanical saw all right, so to hook up the saw, I like to do them in between belts. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to bring out a belt here like this. And I'm just going to do it one, one wide for now. And then we're going to add that. And we're going to put our saw down in between here. And let's rotate it so that its saw is up like that. And then we'll have another belt here for the output of it. Right? And then what we need to do is we need to get power between these. And so technically we could do a chain drive here, like U to U to U, and then that would drive all of that, right? All going in one direction. And so now if we take an oak log and we toss an oak log on there, what will happen is when the oak log hits that blade, it's going to strip it. So the first time if a log comes through, it will strip. But you see, oh wait, what's happening? It goes backwards. And it's because 
Saws are weird in the real world. It's the best explanation I have found for this. And it has to do with the force of the saw cutting in the direction against that you're putting the item through. I don't know. Something weird. Really, all you got to do is instead of doing chain drive here, what we can do is we can um, we can put one gearbox in, right? If we do one gearbox here like this, and then um, actually we're going to do chain drive here and chain drive here, and we're going to put a gearbox in between them because this will reverse the direction of the saw and then we can chain drive on this. There's other ways to do this, of course. You can come up with other ways to hook that up, but that should reverse the direction of that saw because his power will all come through here and then this should reverse the direction of the saw. And now if we put this on here, let's toss one of these on there, it should cut in that direction. There you go. You basically reverse the direction of the saw and like I said, when it comes out this side, it's gonna be a stripped log. Now, if you take that stripped log and you feed the stripped log back through, what it will do is it will turn it into planks. So depending on the pack you are playing and what the recipe setup are, a lot of time you can create other things in here. So for example, two slabs or two planks make a stick or something like that. But that depends on how that's set up. Um, I know in, in base create, that is not the case. In base create, you won't get that. So if you come in here and you, you click on your, your saw, you can s usually see what the recipes are that the saw can handle. Um, as you can see, we can actually cut some, some copper and some other things too and make a lot of different stuff that we normally couldn't make. So if we wanted to make, for example, let's just say that's block cutting. Regular sign is stripping and slabs. What was that? Shafts? You could create shafts if we threw an andesite alloy up there. So let's go boom. What happens with that? Ah, wait. Now we got something different. What is that anyways? What did we get? That's an andesite out ladder. So it chose the first thing that it could find. And it sawed it into that. So it has a recipe filter on the back here, right? And same with the basin. If we set that to slabs, or to, to shafts, because that's what we want it to create, and then we toss that on there, when that goes through, it should cut that now into shafts instead of ladders. Boy, it's not fast though, is it? There you go. That's what we wanted to see. Oop. That's not what I wanted. So that's the shaft. So to keep that in mind, a lot of times you have to set these filters to specifically get what you want. The next thing we're going to look at is the grindstone. That is some polished stone, a casing, and a cogwheel. I'm sorry, the millstone it's called. And so we can take that guy. And this is... Uh, Kind of what it sounds like it's for grinding things it's for milling things together um it's connection points let's put one up here so you can see it's got a bottom connecting point and then it's got the dial there so you can do connect this up different ways let's say we wanted to put it there you can't rotate it that way see but what you can do is let's say we had a vertical gearbox there and then we could set it there and now it's got rotation that way See, another way you could hook it up, let's say you didn't want it like that. Let's say you wanted it flat on the ground. There was nothing underneath. We could take a, well, let's put a gearbox first. Actually, we don't even need a gearbox. Yeah, we do. We're going to put a vertical gearbox first like that, right? And then we could take a cogwheel. And if we take our cogwheel and put that on top, right? And then let's just say that we had some grass here and now we could take our millstone and put our millstone right there and our millstone now gets power through the cog instead of through that bottom see so number of ways to hook things up just keep that in mind if it looks like it should hook together most of the time it actually will and in this case you just put things in here so let's say we take the bone and we throw it in there 
He's grinding. And then with a bare hand, we can right click again. And now we've got bone meal. And so any of the recipes that require grinding or milling of things, that's how you would do that. And again, you can probably look at all the recipes that are available in your pack um, by right clicking on this guy. And you can see all number of things you can do. Like we could take andesite, we could get cobblestone. We could probably take cobblestone if I'm guessing and get sand. So if I was to throw some cobblestone in there, give that a second to do its thing. And you can see the little particle effects when it's grinding something. And different things are obviously gonna take different amounts of time. And it actually gave me gravel, okay. And then you could probably take that gravel and throw that in there, and from gravel we would get sand. Actually, we got flint instead of sand. So yeah, again, that's going to depend on the uh, the pack you're playing. And so in this case, let's say we wanted to automate this. So you could have a system coming in, a hopper coming in, and then let's say that this was going to go into a chest, right? Your chest would be there, and then you could have the hopper underneath it to pick it up out of that. And then if we put, um, let's say we put this cobblestone in there, it should grind that up, feed it through the hopper and into this chest. And then that way you could automate a bunch of stuff at once. Yep, here comes our gravel. So that's the millstone. And so the last item we're gonna look at today is the mixer. And to make a mixer, you got to have a paddle blade to start with. And a paddle blade or a whisk is alloy and iron sheets, and that'll give you the whisk. And once you have a whisk, you can use that with a casing and a cogwheel, and you can make a mechanical mixer. For the mixer, you will need a basin, because you have to mix in a bowl. And we are going to put a basin right here, and then we will put our mixer directly above it like that and then in this case we're going to bring a chain drive up again like we've been doing and you notice there's no shaft connection on this guy so this is where we get into doing um mixing of things like we saw did here with the millstone we need to hook this up using a cog and so if we take a cog wheel and we put that on top of that vertical guy there. Now we have that. And this is 16 stress units, but oh, what's that note say? It appears this mechanical mixer is not rotating with enough speed. And so for mixers to work, you need more speed. You have to have more speed. And we've been talking over and over about how slow all this stuff turns right now. And there's several ways to increase speed, but since we're still at the beginnings phase, we're gonna do it the beginning way. Okay, so in order to speed this up fast enough so that it can do mixing, um, we have to do what they call stepping up speed. Right now, if we take a speedometer and we put it on there, we can see that our rotation is at 4 RPMs, which is nothing. It's really slow. So we're going to do a couple of things. This is going to get a little ugly. There are easier ways to do this, mind you. But we're going to take a large cogwheel and we're going to put it on top of that. And again, we can put our we can put our that our speedometer on there, and we can see we're at four RPMs. But if we take a small cogwheel and come off to the side of this, let's say right here, you can now see that that is now eight RPMs. We've twiced our speed on this, okay? And so then, if we take another large cogwheel off of that guy, take a peek real quick that steps it back down. So what we're gonna do then from there is we're gonna come off of him. We're gonna put us another vertical gearbox like that. We're gonna put another large off of him. We'll take a look with your speedometer. We're at eight. And now if we put another cog onto that and put our speedometer off of that, we're now at 16. Okay, there. And then we're gonna do another large cogwheel off of that. And we put that there. Now we're at 32 RPMs here. And from there, 
we should be able to drive that connection in. So let's put a gearbox here like this. Let's put another vertical here like this. And then we're just gonna go regular gearbox to vertical gearbox. And now that is fast enough for us to do mixing. And that's ugly as hell. And there are much easier ways to do speed increase, but not right at the beginning. Um, right at the beginning, you'd probably want a system that's got a, a faster RPM in general. In this case, this is just not fast enough. So we will go into better ways to get speed that are less ugly than this. And there are several, uh, but that's for the next video, I believe. But that said, once we have the speed that this mixer can work, now you can throw things in here and you can uh, get things out. So for example, if we threw some white wool and some green dye in there, that will go to town mixing that. And now we get green wool. And so again, like with everything else, if we look at create mixer, you can see what the recipes in your pack are. And again, there are, there are several. Um, you can create potions. This is just the, the base create. Uh, and then other things I have in the pack. You can create dyes in this pack. There's all kinds of things. And again, this is the basin, so you can set a filter here so it'll only mix that. So those are the basic starting machines in Create, and there is still so much more to look at in Create. Create is such an involved uh, mod, but you can do so much amazing stuff with it. And um, we will do that. We will continue this series, and we will cover more advanced topics as we go. Um, I hope this helped. I hope you liked this video. If you did, do me a favor, hit the like button. Um, sub to the channel. It helps a lot. And uh, drop me some comments below. Uh, hopefully this is something you guys do want to see. And uh, we will add more of it on here. So until next time, bye now. Yeah.